This is the ROG Flow Z13 2025 edition. And it doesn't have a discrete GPU. Is, aren't these like gaming tablets? Isn't that what, what ROG is famous for? It doesn't have a discrete GPU. And yet, it's as fast, maybe a little faster than a 4060M. Because it's the Radeon 8060S. But it's built into the CPU. And also I'm running Linux. So I'm going to give you all the stuff that you need to know for running Linux. Because running Linux on this thing is a first class experience as well. I was kind of shocked. Let's, let's, let's dive in. Let's take a closer look. This is a tablet. It's like, uh, imagine a, a gamer grown up version of the Microsoft Surface, except the Microsoft Surface doesn't have anything on this. 16 cores on 128 gigabytes of RAM. This will destroy any Surface that Microsoft has even ever thought about making. It has a front facing camera, it has a rear facing camera, it has USB 4, it has full size HDMI, it has a special 200 watt charger plug thing that's on this side. This side also has a power switch, a multifunction switch, a rocker switch, a Type A port, a TRRS headphone microphone port, and a folio cover that's got a not terrible touchpad. And a surprisingly reasonable keyboard that, like a Surface, has you know two angles that it can operate at, and a pretty nice glossy screen. We covered a lot of this in the review. It's also a kickstand. Under the kickstand is a 2280 M.2 SSD. I have uh, replaced the SSD with a Kyoxia 1TB 2230 M.2 and that is what I have installed Linux on and this thing works great. It's also got some fans, a couple of fans because uh, this thing, I mean, if you're running this thing full tilt, GPU and CPU, it'll kill the battery in about an hour and a half. Uh, real world scenario, you're going to get about four or five hours out of it as I've configured for this video. Um, best case scenario, it's all on the order of like seven and a half hours, eight hours, something like that. Oh, and there's also a micro SD port on this side. I forgot about that. Yay, micro SD. So what gives us 16 cores? It's the Ryzen AI Max 395 Plus Pro. Pro? Pro. 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 395 Plus, 16 cores. 128 gigabytes of memory. As this is configured, I'm running Ubuntu. Ubuntu 25.04 because Ubuntu 25.04 has a newer kernel. The, the name of the game with a good Linux experience on this is you need kernel 6.14.3 or newer. And you need Linux firmware from 5.1 or later. Or you're not, you're not going to have a good experience with this. The worst and most infuriating thing about this platform, and this is not an Asus problem, is the MediaTek Wi-Fi. And that is, like, you look online and the... It's just a lot of complaints. MediaTek on Windows, three-quarter baked. On Linux, historically, it's always half-baked for the first few months that a device comes out. On this device, as of 6.14.3, it is basically okay. I still run into problems with um, scenarios like IPv6, uh, wake and sleep. Sometimes it doesn't come back. Um, but... I am happy to report that it is possible for the Ryzen 395 AI Max Plus Pro platform to be configured to not only do sleep and wake correctly, reliably on Linux, arguably more reliably than Windows by a lot, but also hibernate. I can take that 128 gigabytes of memory and write it to the SSD and then the thing will go to sleep and the battery won't be dead. Otherwise it uses about a half a percent per hour that it is suspended to RAM because I guess keeping power to 128 gigabytes of RAM is tricky. This thing has a memory bandwidth of about 218 gigabytes per second. And that means that on Linux with Rockham, if you run through the guide and you do the, the rock installation of Rockham, you can get this thing up and running 70 billion parameter models running at about three tokens per second. And so that, you know, for a 200 gigabyte per second, for about 200 gigabytes of memory bandwidth and how a 70 billion parameter model works. The math checks out on that three, three and a half tokens is about what you can expect for that configuration. If you're going to run smaller models on this, of course it runs like a dream. If you're going to split that 128 gigabytes of memory between gaming and GPUs, I mean, obviously this is, this, this is almost like a desktop replacement tablet. Like this, this little brick of compute is more powerful than most people's desktop computers, as I'm sure, you know, you'll, you'll see in the comments below, but, the setup guide for this for Linux 
Um, if you want to run Ubuntu, you can, and it's fine. But I think you'll actually have a better experience on this platform with Arch. I actually wrote a guide for Arch Linux for bringing up the HP AI 395 Max Plus, blah, blah, blah. Same platform, similar platform, but this is the ROG version, and so there's some differences. One, the webcam. This is a UVC webcam, and so... And so the UVC webcam here, it, it basically works just fine with the newer kernel and the drivers and, the, and everything else in the guide. And so, and you can see the quality, it looks pretty good. It's a nice aspect ratio. We've also got an infrared camera, which is otherwise known as a Windows Hello camera. Hello. It's like two FPS. So, you know, somebody could write a driver for that and, and do login with, with that sort of thing. So what do you need to know to configure Ubuntu? Well, Ubuntu mainline, you want to, you'll want to install mainline. You can go through the Ubuntu installer, but the Ubuntu installer doesn't even set up things like suspend and hibernate correctly. If you want to use hibernate correctly, you need to manually partition your disk and create a swap partition at the end of the disk that for the 128 gigabyte model should be about 130 gigabytes for the, you're pretty much getting cornered into getting a two terabyte 2280. I know, I know it's just a two terabyte 2280. Those are just, well, yeah, I'm sorry, because 120 gigabytes of memory, you know, two terabytes is fine. Or if you got the 32 or the 64 gig model, then you can create swap that's only 32 or 64 gigs. It's fine. The reason for that is Hibernate really works best if you have a partition. You don't necessarily have to have a partition. There is a hacky way where you can have a suspend, a RAM, an unfragmented suspend to RAM file on an EXT4 partition, and then you can pass the kernel the offset of that and blah, blah, blah. <laughs> but the lower headache option is to just create a swap partition. And if you create a swap partition, you can do things like run BTRFS as your root file system, which is what I chose to do on the Arch configuration. Now, you could totally do Arch on this. That's fine. But if you're not comfortable with Arch, or you don't want to go through the Arch wiki and, like, learn, you know, you don't want to drink from the fire hose of Linux learning from the beginning, you totally don't have to. Uh, Bazite is another option for gaming, and that will, the installer will work fine, and you can run through that, and it's got pretty good quality of life. There are some good resources out there on the internet beyond the level one forums for helping you get that up and running. So if you have this and you're wanting to explore one of those distros, you totally can do that. But this is a perfectly reasonable, serviceable experience on Ubuntu, as well as Arch Linux, because, you know, Arch Linux is pretty good. You might be wondering, why, why Arch? Well, it's because SteamOS has Arch as a common ancestor, and Arch generally is on the bleeding edge version of the kernel, which most of the time is great. Sometimes it's bad. Sometimes it's uh, slower, like the new kernel is slower, and there's a regression, and that has to be figured out. But most of the time, the new kernel is better for this kind of hardware. The people that are doing the development on the MediaTek Wi-Fi, on the Git Mesa drivers and 3D acceleration and all the cool stuff to go with the 8060S GPU that's in this thing, which has 40 compute units, um, that's all happening on those bleeding edge distros. And then it sort of will trickle down to things like Ubuntu. The problem with that is that now everything is moving so fast. There's so much money that is being spent on AI and everything else that it's kind of a rising tide lifts all boats for consumer electronics. And so a lot of the, the insanity of all the AI stuff trickles down into this because you have 128 gigabytes of unified memory and the rock rock them and all the stuff that you can do with AI and acceleration. And the GPU here and the acceleration there is that... The closer you are to where the developers are actually doing the stuff, the sooner you get the stuff to make full use of the hardware. Sometimes it can take six months. Historically, you know, five years ago, ten years ago, it would take six months. It's like you would buy the last generation laptop, and that would be a great Linux experience because the laptop would be released, and all the Linux enthusiasts would spend all their free time making sure that that is an amazing experience. With AI and servers, because the vast majority of servers out there are already running Linux, a lot of this development is happening on Linux first party. It's not really true for gaming workloads, but Valve is doing a lot. The Steam Deck is is one of the most <laughs> crazy successful pieces of hardware ever, and you can basically run the same stuff that runs on the SteamOS distribution as this, including overlays, including power control, including setting a power target, like setting the device to run at 18 watts. In my KDE installation, yeah, I'm using KDE instead of GNOME because GNOME has some weird screen corruption issue. And I talked about that on the level one forum and some other people chimed in and said, yeah, I'm having that too. Doesn't seem to happen on KDE for whatever reason. 
So running KDE on this at 120 hertz and, and having the control to be like, yes, let's just have the whole system use 20 watts of power. And then you can get, you know, three hours, of, four hours almost of gaming out of this. Yeah, that's a good user experience. That's some of the same type of tricks that went into the Steam Deck. So other than the MediaTek thing, what else is not quite there? So there's a fan profile button on the keyboard that can work, but you have to install a special USB HID driver, which you didn't get automatically as, as a kernel 6.14.3, but that's coming. So the software update, that'll probably fix itself. If you're not interested in waiting for the software update, guide on level one form. The keyboard backlight also does work under Linux, but Linux Ubuntu thinks that there's a brightness up and down control instead of just a toggle. And that seems like a bug. Um, and so you have to contend with that bug, but it, it does otherwise work. So like 90% of the keyboard shortcut functionality on the keyboard does actually work for controlling the stuff that you expect it to keep brightness touchpad on and off in case you, if you're doing a, you know, a WASD game, but not using the, uh, you know, touchpad or you don't have a pointing device, like whatever game you're playing just uses WASD. Maybe you're playing old school Doom, I don't know. Uh, and you want to disable the touchpad, the shortcut for that works fine. Hello, it's me from the future. I'm happy to report kernel 6.14.6 .6 fixes the keyboard and a bunch of other little annoyances. Good job, go team. I had nothing to do with that. There's a bunch of hardworking engineers out there, probably at Asus and AMD, working hard to make sure that this thing is a good experience on Linux because, I don't know, reasons. Because Linux is the future, probably. I don't know. Good job, team. Microphone mute, speaker control, all that works fine. The airplane mode button does not work. Fortunately, you can hit the shortcut on the tray icon and control it that way. And that's pretty much all you need to know if you're going to run Linux on this thing. Understand that this is a unique device. It is not a one-size-fits-all. This is a tablet. This is a tablet that can very much be a desktop replacement. But think very carefully as to whether or not this type and format of a device makes sense for what it is that you're trying to do in your computing life. The tablet itself is a brick and it's heavy. And if you were using it like a tablet and holding it for a long time, you probably wouldn't be super satisfied with that kind of a tablet experience. At the same time, if you were using it for something that you need a lot of compute horsepower and you use it with a, you know, a drawing pen or a digitizer or something like that, and you wanna run Linux and you want the keyboard to be detachable, you wanna use this on an airplane during takeoff. You're unstoppable because you can just rip the keyboard off and they can't say anything to you, even though this is technically over the weight limit. I think the FAA is like, oh, it shouldn't be more than like two and a half pounds. And it's like, eh, well, I mean, eh, it's fine. I do really like how ridiculously over the top powerful this is. And I also really like how much of a first class experience Linux is on this. And I also like taking this kind of a machine into corporate meetings where it's just like, oh, you have a, you have a gamer laptop and it's like, yes, but this, this will absolutely destroy all of the other compute devices in the room for just raw performance because 16 cores and 128 gigabytes of memory and everything else that goes with this platform. So to say that it was an exciting Linux experience is an understatement, but if you pick up one of these or you have any trouble troubleshooting it or you want to just add some uh, tribal knowledge to that thread on the level one forum, well, I'm signing out and I'll see you there. Thanks for hanging out, chat.